Again, good morning, folks. This is Binghamton University's Open House. This session is financial aid, so we want to welcome you and thank you for being with us this morning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start off by introducing myself, and then the other two folks that are on with us will definitely introduce themselves as well. My name is Byron Gittens. I'm Senior Assistant Director in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. I'm a regional here at Binghamton, been here close to two years now, and um, we're happy to have you here today. This is an important session. We will have Sean in the background um, answering questions in the Q&A. So if you do have questions throughout this presentation, um, Rocky will be talking and probably answering quite a few of them, but please feel free to make sure that you are answering, asking questions inside the Q&A. Um, you two wanna go ahead and introduce yourself as well? Awesome. Uh, hi, I'm Rocky Weintraub. I'm one of the financial aid counselors here. Hi, my name is Sean Sherwood. I'm also a financial aid counselor. All right, let's there get rolling. All right, so I'll turn it over to you folks. And uh, again, please ask questions in the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Byron. All right, so thank you all so much for joining us today for our presentation about financial aid here at Binghamton University. Uh, we really appreciate the time you're taking, especially during this uncertain time, to plan ahead for your future. Um, we have crafted this presentation to be informative, but also interactive. So there is going to be an opportunity to answer polls along with that opportunity, as Byron said, to ask questions during the Q&A. Um, and at the end, we'll also talk more about how to reach out to us uh, for more personal questions. It is not a secret that Binghamton University provides incredible value, uh, providing the highest quality of education for a fraction of the price compared to other highly ranked schools. Binghamton University is consistently ranked as one of the best bang for your buck schools um, out there. And as an alum, I have personal experience and Sean is an alum as well uh, about the level of rigor and experience uh, and opportunity that a Binghamton education can provide. So before we get into the meat of the presentation, just to go over some tech notes uh, throughout the presentation, again, use the Q&A feature, not the chat feature, um, to submit questions. We're also going to be using that Zoom poll feature to test your knowledge over the course of the presentation. So please participate. There's going to be a pop-up window for you to put your answer in. Uh, and let's do a practice question to make sure you all get the hang of it. Who is Binghamton University's mascot? Uh, is it Harpo the Mexican Burrow, Colonial Chicken, Baxter the Bearcat, or the Binghamton Colonials? So almost all of you got it right. Baxter the Bearcat is our mascot, um, but just some fun Binghamton trivia. At different points in the school's past, each of these has been at some point a mascot. So good work, guys. All right. Now... We have a real, real poll about a little bit more content relevant knowledge. What does FAFSA stand for? Is it Federal Application for Student Aid, Free Application for Federal Student Aid, Federal Aid for Students Application, or Free Application for Federal, uh, sorry, Flexible Spending Accounts? All right. So this one was closer because it was a trickier question, uh, but the correct answer actually is free application for federal student aid. Um, we do like to emphasize that it is a free application. Um, there are services out there that advertise that, oh, you can file your FAFSA just for a fee, um, but it is a free application that you should be able to complete without needing to pay anyone for help. <laughs> okay. Oops. Okay, so to talk about financial aid, let's begin at the very beginning. Um, and the first step to apply is to complete your FAFSA at studentaid.gov or on the My Student Aid mobile app, which looks like this. The FAFSA for the 21, uh, 2021 to 2022 year, um, which is used for fall 2021 to spring 2022, um, opened up on October 1st of this year. So you have the option to complete this now if you haven't already. Uh, please file your FAFSA by January 1st. That is our recommended filing deadline. So how is financial need determined? Um, it's determined through a complex algorithm developed by the Department of Education. As you complete the FAFSA, you're going to report all of the following information that's used to create an expected family contribution, or EFC. Uh, parent and student 2019 income, parent and student's assets, size of family, number of children in college, age of the parents, and the cost of living index where your family resides. To determine financial need, 
we'll take the cost of attendance at a school minus that EFC number. Um, and this is why financial need could be different at different schools because the costs at different schools are different. <laughs> Please note that the expected family contribution is not gonna be your bill. Um, it's not gonna be what you actually owe an institution. It is an index number that dictates aid eligibility at a given school. Um, and your EFC is gonna be the same school at every, uh, is gonna be the same at every school you've noted on your FAFSA. Uh, some schools also require the CSS profile to complete applications for financial need, but please be aware that Binghamton does not use the CSS profile. Okay, what types of financial aid might you expect as part of a financial aid offer? Um, an offer could encompass one or more of the different types of funds here. So scholarships, federal loans, work study, and grants. Uh, scholarships can come from multiple sources, including the school itself, your high school, local organizations, or local, regional, or national scholarship agencies. For scholarships at Binghamton University, all incoming students are reviewed for scholarship funding upon admission. Uh, scholarship selection is based on academic merit and often also on financial need. There's no separate application to complete. Federal loans are available to pretty much any student who files a FAFSA, though the type of loan can vary uh, depending on demonstrated financial need. And we're going to talk more about loans in a little bit. Uh, federal work study is offered to students who display financial need via the FAFSA and indicate on the FAFSA that they're interested in federal work study. These funds are earned by the student by working in an approved work study job. Um, and the majority of work study jobs are on students, uh, are on campus, so it allows the students to uh, work, earn a paycheck, and go to school pretty conveniently. And uh, note that these funds are never going to credit a student semester bill. Um, it gets earned in the form of a biweekly paycheck, just like a common part time job. And grants for that last slice uh, include the federal Pell Grant and other federal funds uh, or the New York State TAP Grant. Students qualify for federal grants uh, based on their EFC when you file the FAFSA. And New York State residents can apply for the TAP Grant by completing the New York State uh, Aid Payment Application through the New York State HESC, also known as HESC, website. The TAP grant is available for New York State residents whose 2019 income was lower than $80,000. Uh, TAP grant recipients who attend a four-year SUNY school like ours will also receive a SUNY tuition credit grant, and amounts of both of those things will vary depending on the family's income. As we explained, there's no additional application to, uh, to be to there is no additional application you need to submit to be considered for Binghamton scholarships when you apply for admission. Um, however, we also encourage you to seek out and apply for outside scholarship opportunities. Like we just mentioned, sometimes scholarships are offered by your high school, local organizations, or local, regional, or national scholarship agencies. Uh, good sources to find these opportunities include your high school guidance office and some online search databases. There are several websites uh, that have compiled search engines for scholarships, including College Board, Fast Web, and CareerOneStop.org, um, and that's the Department of Labor website. Uh, we do encourage you to use caution when you're looking for scholarships on the web, but many legitimate databases do exist to aid in your search. And you might also help find help for some resources at your local library or local businesses and civic organizations like professional organizations. Um, sometimes parent employers or unions also have scholarship opportunities in place. So I hope all this information gives you a good starting point uh, to start your outside scholarship search. Moving on to loans, as we mentioned before, by filling out the FAFSA, a student will be eligible for federal loans and the amount of type and the type of loan is dependent on financial need, which is dictated by the FAFSA. Um, so there are two types of these loans, the federal subsidized loan and the federal unsubsidized loan. The difference between the two is the subsidized loan is based on need. Um, where the unsubsidized loan is not. Um, the subsidized loan, the federal government pays the interest while the student is in school. So the student only becomes responsible for interest that accrues during the repayment process. Uh, repayment for both these loans begins six months after a student leaves school. Um, and they have the same interest rate and origination fees. For the current uh, aid year, the interest rate was 2.75 with an origination fee of 1.057. Um, and uh, 
the rates for each year are, de are determined by uh, congressional action each year. So we'll, we'll see still what the interest rates for next year will be. There is a maximum amount of these loans that a student can get each year uh, as a first year student uh, that caps out at 5,500 between both programs. Okay, now we're gonna move on to another poll question. Do I need federal work study to work on campus? Yes or no? Uh, most of you are correct. The answer is no, you don't actually need federal work study to get an on-campus job. So part-time employment is an option for students who are interested in working. If a student does get offered federal work study uh, in the financial aid package, that means they have the opportunity to apply for uh, jobs that are designated as federal work study jobs on campus. But if the student isn't offered work study, uh, but they still want to work, they also have the opportunity to apply for non-work study student assistant positions. Uh, payment from either type of employment is earned in the form of paychecks directly to the student and does not directly apply to the student's bill. Binghamton uses a university specific job listing site called Hire Bing, um, where students would be able to log in and apply to any jobs that they're interested in and qualified for. All right, and another poll already, switching gears to New York State Aid. So which of the following are New York State Aid programs? The STEM Incentive Program, the Excelsior Scholarship, uh, Tuition Assistance Program Grant, aka TAP Grant, or all of the above? Again, the majority is correct. All of these, in fact, are New York State Aid uh, programs, and we're going to talk about each of those just in a moment. We're going to start with STEM. Um, so in addition to TAP and SUNY tuition credit, a popular New York State Aid program is the STEM Incentive Program. Um, it's also offered through New York State HESC, aka HESC. Uh, it is a full tuition award available to students that attend a SUNY or a CUNY school. To be eligible, students have to be New York State residents, they have to be in the top 10% of their graduating high school class, they have to be enrolled in a STEM approved major, and have to maintain a cumulative 2.5 GPA throughout their undergraduate career. STEM approved majors include science, technology, engineering, and mathematics related majors. Uh, business, economics, or liberal arts majors are not considered STEM approved. Students have to sign an agreement to work in the STEM fields in New York State for five years post-graduation um, to get this award. And by visiting hesc.ny.gov, you can view the full criteria, terms and conditions for the STEM incentive program, which includes a full list of STEM approved majors if you want to check if the program of study you want to pursue would qualify. The Excelsior Scholarship rolled out a couple years ago, and it's a program through New York State that will pay an in-state student's uh, tuition charge. We're going to go exactly over how that works in the next slide, um, but to be eligible, you do have to be a New York State resident, a U.S. citizen, or an eligible non-citizen, achieve a high school diploma or its equivalency, um, and have a combined, which means student and parent, household 2019 federal adjusted gross income of $125,000 or less. While in school, an Excelsior recipient student has to maintain 12 degree applicable credits each semester. Um, and students do work closely with their academic advising office to make sure they're meeting that requirement. And lastly, students need to complete 30 credits each year to remain eligible year to year. The Excelsior Scholarship application traditionally becomes available to complete in the summer, so it is not something that you're going to complete at the same time as the FAFSA and the TAP application. Uh, this separate application is also done on the HESC website when it becomes available, and you're only going to need to do the application once throughout your college career. Once you complete the Excelsior application, HESC will determine your initial eligibility and notify the school you indicate of your eligibility. Uh, please note you're also going to need to sign a service agreement, which is the terms and conditions of the post-graduation requirement. So in order to use the Excelsior Scholarship, students have to agree to live and work in New York State for the number of years that they receive the Excelsior Scholarship. If that agreement gets broken, uh, the student has to pay back what was received from Excelsior as an interest-free loan. So there are some misconceptions about the Excelsior Scholarship that we want to make sure we outline. 
eligibility for the Excelsior Scholarship doesn't mean free college, um, but it can be a great source of funding for qualified students. So let's talk about how it actually works. Um, as an Excelsior recipient, you are charged a lower tuition rate. Rather than paying the traditional in-state full-time tuition charge, Excelsior recipients get charged 6470 which is locked in for their four years of attendance so long as they remain eligible for Excelsior. Excelsior is considered a last dollar scholarship, which means that it'll cover the gap between the student's tuition charge and other tuition applicable financial aid. So per New York State regulations, uh, funds like Pell Grant, TAP Grant, SUNY tuition credit, and tuition-based scholarships are considered in the calculation of Excelsior. Um, so here is an example. As you can see, uh, the reduced tuition rate of 6470 gets reduced by Pell, TAP, SUNY tuition credit, and a scholarship. Um, if students receive other grants and scholarships that exceed 6470, they might not get a monetary benefit from the Excelsior Scholarship. So please do be aware of those uh, regulations too. Okay, so switching gears away from New York State Aid, let's talk about some other loan options that exist to help close the gap between a student's cost of attendance. Um, and this includes the Parent PLUS loan as well as private loans. The Parent PLUS loan is a federal loan option available for the parent or the step-parent of a student. Uh, the online application is on studentaid.gov. A credit approval gets, is required on the application, um, and you find out right away if you get approved or denied for that. Uh, repayment for that loan can begin within 60 days of when the loan disperses, or you can defer it um, until your student's loans go into repayment, so six months after your student leaves school. The application for next year is going to open up on May 1st of 2021 on studentaid.gov. Another option or options are private or alternative education loans. And these type of loans are offered through private lenders. Um, each lender is different both in options as well as uh, the application processes. Most of these loans require the students to apply followed up with a parent or another adult co-signing. Um, and our financial aid website does link to a list of lenders if you're interested in searching out these options, but our office cannot recommend any specific lender. Some families also opt to use the university's payment plan instead of or along with other loan options. Um, at Binghamton, we offer a payment plan that allows you to break the bill payment for each semester up into monthly payments instead of needing to be paid all at once at the beginning of a semester. Okay, we understand you guys are gearing up to make a really important college choice decision and cost is a huge factor in that decision making. So now let's dive in to understanding the costs here at Binghamton, um, how financial aid package work works and how you're going to compare your financial aid offers. Okay, so first we're going to look at the direct or build costs for the academic year. These are the rates for the 2020 to 2021 academic year. The 2021 to 2022 rates were going to be posted on our website as soon as they become available and they will be reflected on the financial aid offer you receive from us. Um, these costs you see here are combined fall and spring costs um, and it includes tuition. Um, this is calculated based on full time enrollment at 12 or more credits. Mandatory fees are billed to all students and provide support for various services both on and off campus. Uh, some of these fees include transportation fees, which allow students to use the bus system without needing to pay for every ride. Um, and technology fees, which includes uh, supporting internet access, computer labs, printing abilities, and uh, many other technology services that are available to our students. Lastly here is the housing and meal plan. Uh, for students living on campus, housing charges can differ depending on the specific residential community and room style the student is living in. For example, a single room in Dickinson community, which is our newest housing community, um, is more expensive than a double room in Hinman College, which is another one of the communities. Every on-campus student is also required to have a meal plan, uh, but students can adjust the meal plan to fit their specific eating habits. So next, we're going to look at indirect costs. Um, and indirect costs are costs that we know the student are going to have, um, but are not billed directly by the school. So for financial aid purposes, books, supplies, travel, um, and personal expenses are estimated and calculated into the student's cost of attendance. 
that's what brings the bottom the bottom lines there. So once you've been accepted by Binghamton and applied for financial aid, our office will provide the student with a financial aid package. Um, a notification gets sent out to the student to view or access their financial aid package on the Binghamton student portal. Um, and they'll be able to download the form you see here, uh, which is called the SUNY Financial Aid Plan. This is a great breakdown of, at the top, the estimated cost of attendance, as well as the different types of aid that gets offered. Um, and on the right side of the form, uh, you'll see some statistics about Binghamton, which include our graduation rate, loan repayment rate, and other pertinent information. Um, and this form is great because uh, it clearly lays out the different types of aid and the costs to help you better compare offers. But there's another tool you can use to compare offers uh, pretty easily too. Um, and Sean, if you could link this in the chat for people. Um, on our website, we do have this handy dandy comparison worksheet that allows you to input information from the financial aid letters uh, from Binghamton and up to two other different schools at a time. Um, so this is great because it does calculate your total out of pocket cost for you at each school. Um, and at the top, there's an option to clear the form and just input more if you have more schools you want to compare. So I hope you guys use that. It's a helpful tool. Okay, so we have another poll. All right, guys, what is the best way to reach us as in the financial aid office? You can see a phone number, an email, live Zoom, in person, or all of the above. All right. Um, so most of you are correct. All of the above is the correct answer, although you really can use any of these methods um, with the caveat that at the moment we are still not available um, in person in the admission center, but we do have uh, digital op uh, virtual options as well for that. Um, so like you can see here, um, you can give us a call uh, during our normal business hours. You can send us an email as well at any time. And virtually, uh, we do have a Zoom um, virtual front desk that you can just drop in by, uh, ask questions, as well as setting up an appointment uh, for a counselor on call appointment. And both of the links for that are found on binghamton.edu slash financial dash aid which is our website. There's a whole bunch of fun resources, <laughs> useful resources there um, for you to use as well. Okay, so um, I know Sean's been tackling some questions uh, over the course of the presentation. So if there's any left for us to handle. Um, I know there, there was some questions uh, people had during registration um, to mention, so I just want to make sure I'm covering those as well. Uh, someone had asked um, if they are a U.S. citizen living abroad, um, how to apply for financial aid. So you can still apply for the FAFSA because you're a U.S. citizen. Um, even if your parents are not citizens, you can still apply. Um, if your parents like had income in a uh, foreign country, you'll report that income just converted into U.S. dollars. Um, so that's not a problem. You can still apply for financial aid. We also had a question about a family who um, is anticipating a loss of income since 2019. Now, our office does have a process called our special circumstance appeal process that allows us to revisit a student's federal financial aid eligibility based on changes um, to uh, family circumstances since the uh, year the FAFSA is looking at, that is something we start reviewing in the spring semester, um, like in the spring of each year. So keep an eye out for that. Um, if you wanna get a, like a head start to see what we might need, we do have on our website, the current year's special circumstance form, just to take a look at and see the kind of things we need. Obviously that form is not usable for next year yet, um, but keep an eye out, that'll get posted as soon as it's available and we'll start reviewing those again in the spring semester. I pushed that site out in the, uh, in the chat as well. Uh, thank you so much, Sean. And I'm gonna add folks, um, there's probably some um, admissions questions. Certainly you can reach out to the admissions office. I did just share in the chat our 360 uh, campus uh, tour that you can take. You can see places on campus, go inside a dorm room. You can certainly hear stories from some students. That's something new that we launched, um, especially you know with the pandemic. We wanna make sure that folks who wanna visit the campus have the opportunity to do it right from their own home. Uh, some of the questions I know that are coming out are when's the application deadline at this point it's January 15th so I encourage all 
students who are still looking to apply to Binghamton. We are the number one public SUNY out of the 64 institutions to have the application and supporting documents in by January 15th. We're rolling decisions. So these decisions will be launched based on once we're done reviewing the applicant, we may release a thousand decisions. So everyone's not gonna hear the same time. We're not waiting till February 28th and release uh, 30,000 decisions. Uh, some of the other things I think folks are wondering about are test optional. We are test optional. We are reviewing people for special programs. We're reviewing people for scholarships out of the admissions office without SAT or ACT scores. So again, it's optional. Students who are asking whether or not I should submit Really up to you. You can look at our academic profile to see where we had the middle 50% SAT, ACT scores. I would tell students, if you think that's going to enhance your application, sure. But if not, you know, it, we're test optional. We will review you for the nursing school. We will review you for engineering without these scores. Um, there is a open house again. So if there are sessions that you think you want to be involved in or visit um, with us, Certainly, it will be the week of December. Let me just take a look. I just had it up here. December 13th. So that will be the next open house. We certainly, as long as you're on our mailing list, which all of you are because you're registered, you will be getting information about that. So do reach out to us in the admissions office for anything with that. Rocky, Sean, thank you so much for the financial aid presentation. It was very thorough. Um, so hopefully that answered a lot of questions. And thank you for being here with us on this Saturday for the attendees and certainly our friends in financial aid. Thank you. All right, folks, Thank you. take care. Everyone have a great day.